is Ethan Vosberg, and today I want to talk about lattices. They actually show up in a lot of places that you really wouldn't expect. We're all familiar with just a regular grid, and for the most part, lattices are really similar to this, but they have one key distinction that kind of makes them different, and that's the fact that we're not looking at a continuous line or 2D plane or 3D space of points. We're looking at discrete points that are along whatever space that we choose. So for example, if we were to go over one unit and then up one unit, that would be one point. And so we don't have a continuum. We just have a bunch of points that are on this plane or vector space. And so continuing, let's go back to the grid. And here we see that we could apply a transformation to this, to all these points, and make something new. And so that's the whole idea with lattices and transforming them. So let's start by just doing a basic transform. So our basis is 1, 0 and 0, 1. And because lattices are discrete points, we're going to be multiplying that basis by an integer represented by script Z. And so now we can create our lattice by multiplying our basis by different scalar multiples that are integers. And so what do you think this transformation would look like? That's right, it does nothing. Or rather, it does something that we would kind of expect to see as normal. We just get a regular grid. This is also known as a square lattice. But what if we don't want a regular grid? What if we want something a little more interesting? Well, let's go ahead and try out this basis. If we just let this animation run, we see that we get a new kind of grid, one that's much different than what we're used to. But it's still a grid, and we've come to learn that we can define things however we want. So this is known as a parallelogramic lattice. Now, one interesting thing that we can think about is what if we stored information on this lattice? If we didn't want someone to look at that and immediately know what it was, we'd probably want to use something called cryptography. And this is where lattices show up a lot. See, the whole point of cryptography is to hide information from people who don't have the code. And so with lattices, the whole idea is you take that information, you transform it, and then in order to so-called crack the code, you need to find the inverse transformation. So you can get back to a state where you, un you understand the information. And so that's kind of one of the really cool implementations of lattices and a very real thing. Let's finish this off with one final lattice. This one is interesting because we now have some square roots involved in fractions. And so we're expecting a new shape to pop up. So let's go ahead and see what happens. So you could very easily assume that this is just another parallelogramic lattice. However, if you look closer, you'll notice that those parallelograms are made of two equilateral triangles. And if we put a bunch of equilateral triangles together, we would get a hexagonal lattice or an equilateral triangle lattice. It's been very interesting to see just what lattices can do and applying them in different ways to get different results uh, can actually be genuinely useful. I always really enjoy when I can actually see the application of these abstract math concepts in real life. I hope you enjoyed this. I know I sure did. It was very cool to dive deep into a new concept that I have never really looked at before. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section and I'll do my best to try and answer them. Or if I got anything wrong, let me know. Thank you.